Hi friends, we're going to take a look at Luke chapter 8 today. And as I do, I wanted to start with Psalm 43, 5 first. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Savior and my God. I wanted to start with that because we are seeing amazing things. And whatever reason your soul has to be downcast and whatever it is that's disturbing in your heart that stirs you up and uh, there are many things that that um, are even current events that could be doing so we're told to put our hope in God and we're seeing Jesus as Brian mentioned the other day we see him over the demons he has authority over demons he can deliver from demons. He can deliver because of his authority over sickness and illness. All kinds of afflictions. Nothing is too difficult for Jesus. We're seeing that he has authority over nature. He has authority over the religious law. Authority to forgive sins. This is our God. And in yesterday, uh, yesterday when Matt shared, we found in Luke 7 that Jesus has authority over death. He raised a young man back to life. And in today's reading, he raises a little girl back from the dead. So he has authority to do all of these amazing things. He is a deliverer and he can deliver. And so put your hope in God that that Psalm says, for we can put our hope in our Savior and our God because of who he is and because of his heart. What we find in today's reading is that there are actually a lot of people that are now traveling with Jesus because they've been not only witness to miracle, but they've experienced the miracle, life-changing encounters with Jesus have taken place. And these people are learning to hear his word and heed his word, learn it and do it. And he shares actually this whole parable about the sower and the seed, letting us know how very important it is for us to have hearts that are ready, willing, and prepared to take in the word of God because when the word of God is sown into our hearts and it's given place and it's given care, it will grow and it will bear fruit in us. And that's what God wants to do in our hearts. But he also wants us to learn how to be sowers, to share the word of God into the lives of others, to give them these glad tidings of the kingdom of God. Because in verse 8-1, it says, Now it came to pass afterward that he went through every city and village, preaching and bringing the glad tidings of the kingdom of God. And there are several people here listed by name who were following him, who were with him, who were investing in him and the word of the kingdom of God that he was sharing. It's an amazing thing, and it says many, many others that weren't mentioned by name, but they were there too. So we have um, we have the fishermen who saw the miracle of the fish. We have women who were delivered from demons. We have people who were healed. They're following him now. And then as uh, chapter 8 continues to tell us what's happening, we see Jesus says, My mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. So there's something about not just seeing the miracles or believing that Jesus just did something right before your very eyes, but he says, you're my family. If you put yourself in the place to hear my word and then do it, live it out, be changed by it. And so I wanted to say that this um, demon-possessed man, I mean, he was one of these, the glad tidings come, and he's 
majorly delivered from this um, this bondage that he's been living in. And he comes because he wants to go with Jesus. And, and Jesus says, return to your own home and tell what great things God has done for you. And he went his way and proclaimed throughout the whole city what great things Jesus had done for him. He heard the word of Jesus and he did it. And that's what God wants us to do.